Grace, peace, and blessings be unto you, beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, the one who the entire world refer to as Jesus the Christ. I am your pastor, BBJ, and I welcome you to Godcore WordCast. I am so blessed to be in the land of the living. People are leaving here left and right without sign or without any type of notification, just like, boom, people are gone. And I would encourage you to focus on you in this hour. Don't worry about what people are doing, what people are saying. Don't get caught up in social media, caught up in the gossip and the backbiting and the, and the prayer hating and the hating. Don't get caught up in that. Sipping on, you know, haterade on folk. You know, um, celebrating when people fall off or when they fall short. But be a flame in Jesus' name. And I want to encourage you to spark a heart today. Well, I'm so glad that the Most High blessed me and anointed me and called me and gave me a vocation to pastor and shepherd, you know, this awesome God Corps Coalition. That is a unified body of hood shepherds representing the Good Shepherd worldwide. We thank the Most High Yah in Yahshua's name, that uh, we're able to reach the dope boys and the gangbangers and ex-gangbangers, folk ex-convicts, folk who locked up, who we're corresponding with. Um, matter of fact, if you know someone who's locked up, reach out to us so we can correspond with them and so we can pastor them and we can, we can walk with them and mentor them in the word of God. Also, strippers and, you know, street walkers and uh, church hurt survivors and ex church goers and you know we just we just believe that living souls need to be saved in Jesus name and so while other people are real bougie and you know they don't want to be bothered with you they push you to the side kick you to the curb you know here at God Core we embrace you you know here's one pastor that I love you I love you. Uh, you know, our, our ministry family loves you. We're the kingdom. It's not about us. It's all about us, you know, glorifying him. Uh, and, and so you'll find the true love of Christ here at God Corp. Well, I want to speak to you about a few things and I'm going to get right on my way because I know time is of the essence. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people like to preach real long and the Bible talks about a guy, you know, Preaching so that I think it was Paul preaching so long that a guy fell out the window, broke his neck. Of course, he was restored, but we don't want to be that man. Well, anyway, I'm going to talk about vocation. What is vocation? Vocation is a strong feeling uh, or or some type of unction to, to fulfill a mission. Oftentimes, we refer to vocation as a calling. We'll hear people say stuff like, well, this is my calling. Or, I've been called to this. I've been called to that. And, you know... <laughs> For some strange reason or another, um, over the years, it seems to be a great gravitation towards people desiring to preach the gospel. Now, somebody may say that's a good thing. Now, here's the problem. You know, many are called, but few are chosen. And then in many cases, we had the chosen frozen. Now, here's the dilly. There's a lot of people who you know, say that they've been called to preach the gospel. They've been called to pastor and shepherd souls. They've been called to evangelize. They've been called to prophesy. They've been called to teach. They've been called to be an apostle or to pioneer a movement, be a kingdom ambassador, a kingdom power mover. And, and you got to ask yourself, why is that? You know what I'm saying? Because those who are in the gospel uh, for the right reason, you know, preaching and teaching the gospel is not about you know, chasing the bag, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody talking about, you know, trying to chase the bag, chase the bag, you know, taking a million offerings. That's not what it's about. It's all about your vocation, your calling. And when it comes to the things of God, the calling has to come from the most high Yah. So let's look at this thing. Some people, I guess, because of the, the fancy clothes, or maybe it's the prestigious positions or the great honor people bow to them and Oh, here comes the bishop. Here comes the prophet. Here comes the, the evangelist, the apostle. Oh, the apostle's coming. Oh, we do too much. Yes, the Bible says, give honor unto whom, whom honor is due. But it's one thing, worshiping people more than you worship the most high. And that's a no-no. A we're not going to do that. That's not what we're going to do. I have to say this. 
Maybe it's because people get that, that respect and that honor as the man of God or the woman of God. Or watch this. In this day and time, some folk are even honored for being both. Know what I'm saying? Is what it is. All I know is that the most high is holy. And he's requiring us to be holy. And holy is not just clothes. Of course, you know, you want to look decent. I created a word that the most high inspired. And it's two words together, sanctified and fly. So the word is sanctify. That's right. So, you know what I'm saying? You can have swag and be sanctify. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out to E40. You know, my brother from another mother. And Sugar T, I love you, girl. Listen, uh, we're going to move right along. The truth of the matter is, Perhaps it's the glamorization of the gospel. I'm talking about a vocation. The, the so-called churches, we know it to be. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe people want to preach because, you know, they, they see the glamorization. They got some notes here. The glamorization of the gospel. Uh, and it seems to attract people's attention. I don't know. But I'm telling you, when you've been called by the Most High, it's a, it's a, it's a very high honor. And it's a privilege because there's nothing you or I can do to deserve to be called to represent his kingdom. It ought to be a very humbling opportunity and we ought to walk circumspectly, very carefully as we move in the things of God. Now, when it comes to the word of God, you know, I, I love the Bible. I mean, I, I mean, I'm so serious about it from a child. You know, my mom would always read the, read the Bible to me before I went to bed. That was my bedtime story. And so I'm so thankful for that because it, it really radicalized my thinking and my life and really set my spirit on fire for what I am called to do. Uh, I have you to know that when you have a vocation from the Most High, um, the Most High calls you with purpose. Say that with me, purpose. To a people with power. He calls you with purpose to a people with power. And if you've ever had a conversation and you had, you're passionate about who you call to and you're telling people about who you call to and people are like, okay, mm -hmm. oh, praise God. Uh -oh. They praise God. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I see that you're on fire. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh that's great. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. And you get that feeling like whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's like people not really into what you're saying. They're not really receiving you because guess what? They're not. Why? Because they have not been called to that people with your purpose, huh? With, with the power God is investing in you. Do that mean that you throw them under the bus and you curse them? No, you don't do that. But you got to understand who you are and whose you are. Because every ministry and every call is not for everybody. And every leader is not your leader. I've been teaching that a long time. People say, well, well, I'm the bishop over there. Yeah, you're the bishop over there. But you're not the bishop over here. You understand what I'm saying? And somebody, well, I prophesy. I'm the prophet. You might prophesy over there or prophesy over there. But you don't do that here. You know what I'm saying? I am the set man that the Most High has put in place. And so when I'm dealing with souls and I'm dealing with ministry and vision, whatever I allow to happen that go left or go south, that the blood is on my hands because I am the watchman. You know, that'll make me the I'm the big dun dada. I'm this and that. I'm the I'm the, yo, yo, I'm in charge. I'm, I'm Joe Clark. No, no, that's not what it is. You know, say so even though I do have a bat, I got one over there actually, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, it's <laughs> I know I'm crazy. I know who I've been called to. And the one who will be the greatest amongst you will be the least amongst you. I am the minister. I am the servant. I'm here to serve the souls and the people. Now, as a leader and even as a pioneer in global marketplace, music, ministry, and media, I, you know, I mean, even in the global marketplace, the things I'm able to do is only because of who the most high is and how Yeshua works through me in order to do what I do to bless the nations. But I don't take all the credit for it. I mean, to God be the glory. When I say that, some people try, you know, they be like, oh, don't be all deep trying to be pot. No, to God be the glory, because if it's not the power of God working in and through me, I won't be able to accomplish what I'm able to accomplish. So in all things, I give him thanks and I give him praise. This is the will of God. So we look at 2 Timothy 2 and 15. I want to let you know that the Bible says that we ought to study to show thyself, the Bible says, approved unto who? 
unto God. Watch this. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Many times we're trying to prove to people how much Bible we know. Uh, we're trying to prove to people how well we can preach, how well we can teach, how well we can prophesy. God's not moved by that. Talking about vocation. When you have a vocation, you know, it's it's like it's almost like a stage you're performing on. You're, you're, only, you're only supposed to be performing for an audience of one, the O and E, the only never in an existence. That's the most high. That's it. You're not performing for nobody else, just the most high. Matter of fact, the Bible says this. This comes to mind. There's a scripture in Revelation. Let me see here if I pull this up. Revelation. Let me see here. Do, 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 do. Where's that Holy Spirit? Help me out. Help me out. Revelation, Revelation, Revelation. See, I'm looking in the biblical. I could, I could kind of do it the quicker way and pull it up on my phone. That I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna thump through these scriptures. Uh, let you know, let you know the pastor don't be playing around. It's the old fashioned way. Um, so I'm looking at Revelation 4 and 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory. Who's worthy? Thou art worthy, O Lord. On um, the the district, the district elder. Uh, the, um, the superintendent of the, no, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for why, 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 why is God getting, why is the most I getting all that? Come on, y'all, why? It says, uh, for thou has created all things and for thy pleasure, they are and were created. I, I think that says enough. The most High created all things for his good pleasure. That's why we were created. So you can't say, well, I do me. These bills in my name. I, I pay the rent up in this month. I, I, look, I, I'm, my name is on that car note. No, all things were created for his good pleasure. So, you know, you may be getting your pleasure on doing what you want to do, brother, sister, uh, but that's not what the, the Bible say. The Bible say that we were created for his good pleasure. So it brings me to this. You ought to study your Bible. Stop sitting up in these houses of, of, of so-called worship and these other things, even sitting online and streaming stuff. And you saying, I know that's right. Oh, ooh, ooh, I know that's right. Mm, oh, come on, come on, pastor. Come on, pastor. And you don't know what the heck they're talking about. You need to study the word yourself so you can understand, so you can get revelation, illumination of that revelation. And that is what's going to cause spiritual elevation. You need to do that. Now, I want to say this. We all have been called to a ministry if we have accepted Yeshua HaMashiach. You hear me say that? That is the original Hebrew name of the Messiah. Yeshua, that's his name, HaMashiach, the anointed. And for those who say, I don't know what he just said, Jesus Christ, Jesus, the anointed one, but his original name is Yeshua HaMashiach. And so if you, if you would stay connected you will get informed. You will learn a whole lot of things that will blow your mind. Because see, with, with God called Coalition, I often say this, we are the church. We don't go to church. We grow the church. We nurture the church. You know, once again, we don't, we don't go to church. We grow the church. Why? Because we are the church. I know we hear that a lot. People tell you that the church is not the building and people still say, I'm going to my church. Now, you will never hear Pastor BBJ saying, here in my church, with my church, well, this is what we do at my church, because you know what? I am not Yeshua, see? And though and though, though people may look and see all the stuff that we possess and what we're doing and how we're flowing and it may seem amazing, that's because we serve an amazing Elohim. He's the Elohim. He's the God of Yisrael. Elohim is in Hebrew for God. You know, the, the Old Testament is Hebrew. You know that. New Testament is Greek. You know, of course, it's been translated. But the Messiah is Hebrew. And that's who we are. We are the Hebrews. Hebrews are us. All right. We are the people of the Bible. You know, I got some teachings on this channel. Matter of fact, you know, subscribe right now to Garcore TV right now. Hit the bell so you'll be informed when we send out messages because uh, we have a lot of content here. And, you know, your soul need to be fed. And like I said, I'm called to a certain people with a purpose, with power. So the people I'm called to, you receive this and you know this and you hit that, you hit that subscribe right away because you like, yo, this is what I'm talking about. I'm feeling this. This is this is this is what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? This is where it's at. You know, other people may say, I that's too strict. I don't I don't think he ought to speak that way. Uh, I don't think he ought to represent the the gospel. I don't think 
I'm so glad our salvation is not based on, or predicated upon what you think. You know, for the Father says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And the Bible also says, there's a way that seemeth right to a man, uh, but the end ways are the ways of uh, death. We don't want that. Uh, no. All right. We want life. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. You got to go through Yeshua to get to the Father. But we all have a ministry. I'm going to read this here. This is in second. Uh, Second Corinthians, we're going into the Bible again. Some people, they don't even touch the Bible no more. Um, you got to You got to be in the Bible. If you're not in the Bible, I'm telling you, you got a problem. If, if it's not in the spirit, it's in the skillet. You heard? All right, check this out. Oh, here we go. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Father. So it's Second Corinthians 5 and 17. You may have heard this before. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, watch this. When you accept Christ, your Lord and Savior, what, this is what happened. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, you know, and it's say in, in, in church, and it's say in a building, it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, but I, but I rob, I used to rob people. I used to mug people. I used to, I used to gamble. I used to run card fraud. I used to, um, you know what I'm saying? I used to, you know, I used to be a, a, a super fornicator. I used to, you know, I used to be a sexy Sarah, you know what I'm saying? I, I used to be, you know what I'm saying? I used to be a, a, you know, a wannabe, a wannabe Don Perry you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don Juan. Listen, the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, and you can have fun with, with, with you can have fun in Christ. You know, he wants you to laugh and have a good time. All this deep, all this deep, uh, deep carrying on. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible say have the Bible. You better get saved. You better get saved. Ain't that serious? Not serious if you die in your sins, but it ain't that serious acting all crazy. You can have flavor. Remember, be safe to fly and let God use you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Watch this. This verse 18 says, and all things of God, mm -hmm, who have reconciled us to himself, meaning he, he had a way, a, 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 a plan of redemption, of bringing us back to himself. That's what people don't understand. Is Jesus God? How can Jesus be God? He's the son. Listen, sometimes, you've heard this saying before, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. God wrapped himself up in flesh, came through Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. He redeemed man to himself. Remember, he had to go take them keys back. He redeemed man back to himself. This is the redemptive act and work of God. He said, God, God is the one who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Remember, the, the Messiah said, I and the Father are one. He said, we'll make our abode in you. I and the Father are one. How can you do that? I and the Father are one. You have the Father who is God. You have Yeshua HaMashiach, you know, Jesus who is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And these three don't make up no trinity. Ain't no trinity in the Bible. That's something else. But there's the Godhead the Bible speaks of. Godhead. You know, pastor put it out there and you got to research it. Remember, study the show by self approved unto God. You know, and the pastor ain't going to give you everything. Now, I walk with you and I explain it to you. But you got to do some work too, okay? We ain't got no lazy church here. Come on, somebody. You know, we ain't going to be no lazy church. We are very intelligent church, a very intelligent assembly, a very intelligent, you know, uh, body of ambassadors of the kingdom of Yah. Hallelujah. That's right. You sit around on some Scooby-Doo and don't know what the heck is going on. We, we don't do that. We're very knowledgeable of even our culture, of our faith. We know what's going on in society, but we understand the difference between that which is prophetic and that which is pathetic. We're not going to waste time with foolishness. And going back and forth and debating with folk who are just, you know, on some on some bozo. We're not going to deal with that. We're going to go on in the name of the Lord. But watch this. It says this. And all things of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Watch this. And have given to us, boom, the ministry of reconciliation. Now I heard you say, Pastor, where's that at? Uh, second Corinthians, uh, fifth chapter, chapter number five. And that's uh, verses 17 through 19. Actually, I didn't read 19 yet, but I'm going to read 19. To wit that God was in Christ, 
reconciling the world unto himself, see, not imputing their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So people tell me they got a word. I, I got a word. I need a word. There's a word right there. Word, he's committed unto us the word of reconciliation, mean, meaning we're bringing people back to Christ. We're bringing people back to God. That's our ministry. Sometimes we get into these series, all this other stuff and all this crazy stuff. And, you know, we're talking about the moon and the stars and this and that. Folk aren't even saved. You know, we, we're supposed to be, we as the body of Christ, we're supposed to be doing that. Uh, Proverbs 11 and 30, he who win his souls is wise. In the midst of all this foolish is going on in the world, we know we're in end times. We know we're in perilous times. The only thing that's important is that folk getting saved and giving their life to Jesus. That's the only thing that matters. At the end of the day, when you close your eyes, nobody care about this here, this concert, and you know what I'm saying? We got the anniversary coming, and we got this and that. It's nice to celebrate and stuff, but when you lose focus, you got a problem, which brings me to this, that Hebrews 12. When you lose focus, you in trouble. You in trouble. There's been people who claimed salvation a long time ago, and guess what they did? They lost focus. And when they lost focus, they start losing their mind, their salvation, or anything else. When you lose focus, you got a problem. You got you to gotta stay focused. Doesn't the Bible say, you keep your mind stayed on Christ, keep in perfect peace? When, when your mind's not on Christ, you'll be in imperfect pieces. I'm telling you. And some people are just straight up foolish and on some buffoonery. That's right. They're always up to something. Well, watch this. Hebrews 12, 12 and 1 says this. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now look at that. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, right? Let us do something. Let us lay aside the weight. What is well? It has to be a differentiation be, between the weight and the sin. Now, some people, you know, they think their weight is a sin because they eat too much. And, you know, actually, gluttony is a sin. Gluttony that that's sin. A lot of people think sin is just you know other things like um, homosexuality is a sin, fornicating is a sin. People get on their soapbox and they want to condemn, you know, the LGBT, they want to condemn, you know, ex-convicts, -ex they want to condemn the single baby mamas, they want to condemn this one and that one, but what about themselves? What about their lives? See, it's easy to point fingers at folk and, and say, you did this, you did you in sin, but what about you? But when the Bible's talking about weight, it's talking about anything that can burden you or slow you down from running that race of faith. Anything that slows you down. The Bible is said, lay it aside, lay it aside. That means it could be television. It could be internet. You know what I'm saying? It could be social media. Is that taking up all your time? Some people are posting all day, every day, and they, they, they ain't even think about, they ain't think about no time of prayer. Ain't, they ain't praying. They wake up, do, do, do. they wake up. They wake up, go to sleep, they wake back up. They just on all the time because the world would have you to think if you are not current and on top of your social media game, you can't make it. But the devil is a lot, his feet stink, and there's always a fungus among us. Smell that? <laughs> Smell that? That's funk. That's the devil's feet because it stink. Listen, God will elevate you in due season, but if a man's ways please God, not only will he elevate you, but he'll also make your enemies be at peace with you. You know, you, you've, you've got to bless God at all times. And, and you know what I'm saying? And, and let his praises continue to be in your mouth. You can't be a zombie uh, to the rhythm. You, you, you got to be free to flow. And you can't do that when you got extra weight. Another weight, uh, form of weight can be your relationship. You can say, you know, pastor, you know, I met, I got me a boo now. Yeah, this is my boo. And yeah, he believe in God too. This is my boo. And and, and what I want to know is, have, have you received Christ your Lord and Savior? Yeah, I've been going, I've been going to church, you know what I'm saying? I go to my mom's church. Then ask you that. Then ask you if you go to church. Have you received Yeshua 
Hamashiach as your Lord and say, that's all I ask you. Yo, pastor, I got me a little shorty, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That's my boo. That's my boo right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me tell you something. If your boo is not born again, your boo is going to make you boo-hoo. And if you're not born again, you're going to be boo-hooing too with your boo. You both need to be saved. Yes. And it's not difficult. It's just a matter of surrendering all, you know, surrendering all and saying, look, I... I believe you died for my sins, Jesus. I, Yeshua, I believe that you you rose from the dead with all power, and I believe you're coming back, and I give everything to you. I believe you are the true and living son of the living Elohim of Israel. You died for my sins, and I, and I, I embrace that. As simple as that. And then you receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. That's the Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKadosh, this Holy Spirit in Hebrew. Ruach HaKadosh. The Holy Spirit. The Bible also says the Holy Ghost. You know, and don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost because if you search the scriptures, that's the only thing you cannot be forgiven for. Do not blaspheme the Holy Ghost. I beg you. I I I I, I admonish you strongly. Do not speak against the Holy Ghost. All right. And and and, and listen. You need salvation, and salvation is in Jesus' name. But He's saying lay aside the weight, so it could be your relationship. Um, the weight could also be. It can even be your job. Your job could be your weight. Now, now, are you saying, Pastor, should I quit my job? I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, you know, in your lunchtime while you're gossiping or talking about people or surfing on the web, maybe you need to take a little time to go pray. Find some way to pray. Walk around or something. Go outside. Get some man pray. Spend some time with the Father. After all, most people work eight, ten hours a day minimum. Your ten hours is gone. Where's your time to spend with the Father? Those of you who are in ministry and you work jobs, you know what I'm talking about. It's not a joke. You know what I'm saying? It's like you desire to have more time with God, but you're in that system. But God is able to set you free. Um, the weight could also be, it could even be school. Weight could be your friends. You spend so much time with your friends. Every weekend, you got to go out. You got to go party. You know what I'm saying? You're throwing them back. You're throwing them back. Do you really have to do that? You know, to some folk, now this is going to touch, this is going to hit a nerve. To some folk, the weight is your video game. I mean, dude, you, come on. Oh, oh bruh. <laughs> You're on that video game all the time. Now, I know the pandemic is going on and you know what I'm saying? So it's good to be in. I get it. But put that game on pause and pray. Get in your word. Get in your word. See, in this dispensation of time, it ain't about having a pastor to make you and make sure you give me a tithe. Let me see. Make sure you give your tithes and, and I want to make sure how much you make. Make sure, make sure I know. Give me a tithe. You make sure you're here for prayer. Don't miss prayer. Because if you don't, if you're not there for prayer, then you're not faithful to God. You're not faithful to God if you're not at prayer. If you miss prayer, the devil is in you. Devil is in you. Come on. The, those scare tactics and all that, if you had the power, it would be different, but you don't. Vocation is very important, beloved. Vocation is very important. You should lay aside the weight and the sin. Now, the difference with the weight and the sin is this. See, sin, we all were born in it. The Bible said we all are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. That's why Yeshua came to die. He, he died and, and shed his blood as the sacrifice for our sins. See, in the Old Testament, they had sacrifice. They had, you know, they had altars and sacrificing lambs and this and that. And it's the blood, you know, life is in the blood. The blood, you know, would, would pour and they sprinkle on the mercy, seat, you know, saying the holy holies and the mercy and all that. You know, saying it, they had a system, a sanctified system. And so, you know, it was all about, you know, the blood and the sacrifice. So Christ became our sacrificial lamb and he died for our sin because we have we're living we're living souls. We're dual beings. We're in the physical and the spiritual at the same time. Bet you didn't know that. So we're dwelling in two dimensions at one time. We're dwelling in the physical and, and the spiritual. That's why the Apostle Paul said, the things that I would do, I don't do. That which I don't do, I do. You know what I'm saying? It just, you know, it's a war going on within me because the flesh wants to do this. You know, the flesh may want to do the booty call. The spirit is saying, I want to do, I, I want to answer the call of God, the vocation on my life. It's a difference. You know, the flesh may say, you know what I'm saying? I want to, yo, I want to give me some Hennessy. 
Hennessy on the rocks. You know, uh, the spirit is saying, no, I, I need to get, get, get more committed to ministry and hit the block. See, see, it, it's a difference. Sin will cause you to die and be eternally separated from the most high. That's what sin is. Sin is, sin is anything against the will of, of the father, anything that, that's contrary to holiness and his divine will for your life. Any act or any thought, anything, that's all sinful. Sin, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, oh my goodness, is eternal life. The Yeshua Hamashiach through Jesus Christ. And the beautiful thing about it is that, see, when you die and when I die, it's not so much that it's hellfire and the torment gonna get us. What's really gonna get a get a person when when they when they die and they sin is that mentally they'll be able to think of all the times they had an opportunity to receive and accept Christ as Lord and Savior. And and and, and it's gonna be in their mind. And the reality is that they that you already know that there's a God. You already know that He He reigns supreme. But you just won't surrender to him because your, your flesh is a mess and you desire the things of this world more than the things of Almighty Yah. See, there's a contrast. There's a there's a war going on. You feel me? That's what's happening. And so what I'm telling you as your pastor is that you have to just surrender all. Just like when 12 roll up and you be like, you ain't got no, yo, yo, yo. 12 roll up. That's how it is. But see, as a man of God, I got a gun too. I got a G-U-N, a God you need. And so what I'm telling you right now, stick him up and, and, and surrender everything to him because he loves you. Scripture says that lay, lay, lay aside the weight and the sin, which does so easily beset us. It gets us off course. You, can't, you cannot focus on your vocation when you keep dibbling, dabbling in sin. And when you got weight in your life, you got relationships that's just not right. You know, you, you, you're on the praise team, you know what I'm saying? You're lifting your hands. You know what I'm saying? In the praise team on this day, but then on this night, you're lifting your legs up. Come on, you know, past to keep it 100. I gotta keep it a buck fifty. You saying, yeah, I feel I feel I've been I've been called to the ministry, Pastor. You know, I feel God want me to preach. Bruh, congratulations. But then on the other hand, you say you want to answer the call of God, but then you constantly answering the late night booty call. Big booty Judy. What's going on? So you can't do that. You can't bounce back and forth. If, if, you, if you're seeking companionship, you ought to be seeking, especially if you're a brother, you ought to be seeking wifey material. You know what I'm saying? This is not basketball. You don't need to practice. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you need to focus. And see, uh, the more that you're out there and you let the devil use you, you become a hoe to the devil. Matter of fact, that's the mathematics of the day. Holy is a four-letter word. You take 50% off, you take the LY on what you got left. Oh, what are you saying, Pastor BBJ? When you have step on God, you become a hoe to the devil. Simple as that. You know, that's how we get down with God. Call, we keep it a hundred, keep it a buck fifty. That's what it is. See? And so what the most high is saying that we ought to lay aside the weight and the sin. Watch this. That's so, that's so easy to set us. It, it, it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to get distracted. You know what I'm saying? You're around the wrong people, listening to the wrong things. They're getting in your ear gate. They're getting in your heart. People people are saying stuff. Listen, you don't even have to be in a conversation to let that infestation of negative spirit get on you. You got to be careful. But he says this, watch this. He says, lay that aside. And then he says, uh, and, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We're running a race. You know what I'm saying? Life is a marathon. Hey, we're running a race. And there is a finish line. And that's why we got to walk circumspectly. We got to be careful how we move because the Bible says that the race is not given to the swift nor the battle unto the strong, but unto the one who endureth to the end. And we all know the story about the hare and the tortoise. Hare thought he had it going on, you know, and there's a lot of people jump, jumping around, bouncing around like rabbits, all fast, and they reproduce it like rabbits too, and they're not taking care of their little bunnies, and the court got to come in, and they got to jack your little paycheck, and then you mad to my, it was hard for a brother, yo, it's hard out here. Yeah, but that, that's where it started. It started with you being too hard and too hard-headed, 
You know what I'm saying? To refrain from your flesh punking your spirit. But your flesh is in control and your spirit is, is suffering saying, look, surrender and I'm going to show you a more excellent way. You know what? Because the spirit is like the engine. You know, we're designed as spiritual beings and there's a certain function within us that the spirit is already designed to do. But if we're grieving our spirit with our flesh, that's why fasting is important. Because the more you fast, the, the more you become spiritual, more spiritual than the fleshly. As long as you eat what you want to eat, and you're throwing up the ribs, which shouldn't be messing around that park anyway. Shouldn't be no park on your fork. But anyway, you're throwing up ribs, you're doing what you want to do, you eat what you want to eat. Do, and then, you know what I'm saying? And you got little time for your spirit. Your spirit is malnourished and, and your, your, your body is all big. You, you know what I'm saying? You're walking around all pompous and full and everything. And you know what I'm saying? That, that ain't going to get it. You got to take you got to take the word for what it is. It is truth and it will cause you to live and prosper. All right. Scripture says this, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and finisher of, of, of this life and our life is, has nothing to do with politics, has nothing to do with those, you know what I'm saying? Those, those 13 families that run the country it has nothing to do with none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? All of the different propaganda and, and all, all the secret societies. All, yeah, this stuff does it. It, it exists. People drinking blood and sacrificing family members. All that stuff is true. People, 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 you know, the black market and all that stuff. Yeah, it's true. A lot of, a lot of preachers don't talk about because they're afraid, but I'm not afraid. You know what I'm saying? I'm, a, I'm a God made man. And there's some things that I, I teach, uh, you know, to the saints of, of God called coalition direct. Some stuff I don't put out there because you know, some things the world not ready for. They just not ready for it. You know, they they all they want is he picked me up, man, turned me around, placed my feet on high ground, and I did a slide across the church just like James Brown. That's that's what some people want. They don't want to learn about the culture. They don't want to learn about these these demonic vultures. You know, you know, I I teach the fullness of the word and in a holistic way where the saints here at God Co Coalition, those who are connected with this anointing, you know, um, they understand and it causes you to grow spiritually and elevate so that you understand why things are the way they are and you can strategize and position yourself to win. See, life is a marathon, but the race we're supposed to be running is the race of faith in Christ. But the Bible says that looking unto Jesus, we, we're looking up to Hollywood. We're looking up to other folk. We're looking up to people who we think that they've made it. And we want to be just like them. We look at other folk and we want to be, we want to do what they do. But, but that's not the will of God. We should be looking unto Jesus, unto Yeshua, the author and the finish of our faith. Don't you know if you're the author of a book, you know what I'm saying? You understand all the information, the content. You start and you end it, you know? The God we serve, he's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. So why won't we trust him? Many times we allow ourselves in our life to ride with people, you know, and we think that we're going to get at our desk, arrive at our destination. But the reality of all is they, of it all is that they don't even have a GPS and they don't even have our address. And if you gave me an address, they don't have a GPS to put it in. So why are we riding with people with our destiny, even with businesses? Sometimes we connect with people in business and we ain't got no business messing with them. And sometimes you got to pump the brakes and you got to start all over again or you'll die like the frog in the pot, adapting to the temperature of the boiling water. But, you know, say dying because you have the ability to endure. You know, sometimes you got to get up out of that spot. You got to start over. You got to get into the right place in the right space. Everybody is not for you. I'm telling you. And uh, so the Bible saying this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Christ endured the cross. Why would he do it? Why, why would he do that? Because he loves you. Because he loves me. Okay, so so you don't know your mom. You never knew your dad. So your dad left your mom. Your mom left your dad. So so somebody gave you up for adoption. And you felt like, man, what they ain't love me? Don't trip. Christ died because he loved you. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes your setback is a setup for a victorious or divine comeback. There's a reason why things are the way they are. There's a reason why, why your wife left you. There's a reason why your, your, your husband left you. It's a reason why your child don't want to do right after you taught them the right way. Don't beat yourself up. You know, we got to trust God. 
Don't you know if you have a wayward child, a teenager, or a young adult that's out there doing the wrong thing, don't you know if you would trust God and if you would live holy, if you would stop whoring after other gods and stop being like other folk and, and being like this one and that one and just seek the face of Yahweh, if you would just seek the Father and, and you would pray in his son's name and you would you would believe, you know, that, that he's able to change and turn things around, Shando. Shando means turn around. He, he could turn that thing around. But you got to trust him. We used to sing this song in Monumental. The saints in Monumental Baptist Church. I don't forget it. We used to sing the song goes, Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. See, those hymns and spiritual songs, they do you well when you listen. May not like them then. You know, grumbling and all oh, we got to sing these hymns, but them hymns mean something. Hallelujah. Shout out to all the saints in my middle. Love y'all. Chill Town JC, stand up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And shout out to all my saints at Bible Way Temple. It's the Bible Way Brooklyn in the house. You already know what it is. I'm telling you, um, this is true. You know what I'm saying? You know, Jesus endured the cross because he loved us. It says despising the shame. It, it wasn't a popular thing for him to die like that. And I'm stripping them down and whipping them and cats and nine tails and you know ripping them. Cat, I don't know if you know what that is, but back then that whip, a cat and nine tails is, is a whip, and it has these hooks on the end of the each 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 strand. It has these sharp, real sharp, razor sharp hooks. And every time they would hit you, they would whoop you. And every time they hit you, give you a strike. They would they those hooks of they'll go into your skin, deep in your skin, and then the person will pull it back. Ah! And when they rip it, they rip the skin off. So every time they whip you, you know, say you got 39 strikes for you and me, ah! then it take, they wouldn't take, the, it would be stuck in his flesh. And then they rip it off. Ah! 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 Every time they pull it out, they're pulling out flesh off his back. Jesus did that for you and me. He endured the cross, despising the shame. People were laughing at him. People were spitting on him, laughing at him. The Messiah, the Holy One of Yisrael. The, the, this is the son of Yah, Yeshua, the Holy, the Messiah, the Mashiach. They spit on him. Gave him, gave him vinegar, vinegar drink. You thirsty? Here's some vinegar. This is what they did to our Savior. This is why we worship him and we love him. Because he, he died that we may live. It says that despising the shame and his, now he's set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, he's our intercessor. He intercedes for us. He's our advocate. He's, he's, our, he's our Johnny Cochran. Yes, yes. The Messiah. That's why we pray in Jesus' name, in Yeshua name. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It is important that we take this time out to share. This is what pastor does, to share with you. It's not about hooping and hollering, holding your ear and even kicking your foot up and all that stuff. It's about sharing. It's about teaching, preaching. It's about having the balance and reaching you in a practical way where you can understand. You know, it's, it, it, this is what it's all about. Jesus died that we might live. He died that we might. Isn't that something? He died that we might live. And you know what? It's important to understand who he died for. This is going to freak you out. You'd be surprised. Who did he die for? Now, I know everybody got this thing about, you know, we are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who make a better day. And, and you know, he, he got the whole world in his hands. And, you know what I'm saying? And we are this and that. We are that. You know, that sounds great. But let's see what the Bible says. The Bible says, that in, in, according to the gospel, say Matthew 1 and 21, it says this, and she shall tell my Mary, you know, the mother of the Messiah, is it, and she shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Watch this. For he, now some people say, well, maybe, maybe he's a she. <laughs> yeah, there might be some stuff changed around in this word, but I assure you, the Messiah is a he. And the foundation of this word will never be shaken. It may have been interpreted. It may be interpreted. 
You know, it might be some something. It might be some distracted out of here. You know, we know there's other scriptures. You know, the Park from manuscripts. You know, you got Dead Sea Scrolls. There's other scripts, other other books, and all this and that. But what you need for this life, trust and believe, is in this book. I'm telling you, it is. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people have testimonies of doing all kind of stuff. You know, people convert from other faiths and everything, and it's all because of the gospel. I tell you, even those who have been under spell, the gospel would dispel any spell. It's important that I share this because people are leaving me left and right. I don't know when 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 the father's gonna call me, but I wanted to be a record in the earth where people can go to and say, "Wait a minute, Pastor BBJ taught this." Down the line, people will say, "Man, I heard this before." Yeah, Pastor BBJ was sharing this with us. He was, you know, he he, he did it in a different way, but man, he he told the truth. Yeah, yeah, I did. It's not about me telling you everything I know and trying to be big and bad and I'm, you know, some big willy worship. No. Had it not been for the grace of God, I wouldn't be here today. That's that's real talk. But the Bible says, and and she, Mary, who of course her name was originally Miriam, shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. My people, that's another whole message. He shall save his people. There's another scripture. There's, you know what? There's another scripture. I'm, I'm going to cross this real quick. There's another scripture here. I got to go here. He came to save his people. H-I-S, his. It's all about his love, his life, his blood, his sacrifice for his people. Somebody said, well, who's his people? You got to get in the word. You got to get in the word to find out. Hmm. If you look at the gospel according to St. John's, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Verse 10 says this, 1 to 10 says, he was, he was in the world and the world was made by him. I told you God wrapped himself up in flesh. Okay, now watch this. Here. He was in the world and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. But people say, I, yo, I know God. God know my heart. Yeah, I go to church. Yeah, I've been going to church. Yeah, I've been going to church for a minute now. Yeah, I, I go to that church over there. Yeah, I go to church. Yeah, yeah, I'm up under so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, I'm up under so -and -so. Yeah, I'm up under here. The Bible says that he was in the world. The world was made by him. And they knew him not. Where did they do that at? Verse 11, this is Saint, the gospel of St. John, 1 and 11, watch this. He came unto his own. You know, you try to minister to people, you go to your own. And family can be the worst sometimes. And that's why I say everybody who shares your DNA is not necessarily your family. It's another whole lesson. He came unto his own and his own received him not, meaning they denied him. Get out of here, Yeshua. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. I don't let preaching carry on. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? We about to we about to roll up, you know, about to roll up, you know what I'm saying, roll up this thing thing. You know what I'm saying? We're about to sip on this head. We about, we about to get into something right here. We want to hear all that. Talking about Jesus and Yeshua and all that and salvation. Yo, go ahead with that. We get with you next time. He came unto his own and his own received or not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. He calls us sons. Sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He came unto his own. He came unto his own. His own what? His own people. Folk don't want to deal with that. Jesus is for everyone. Yo, it don't matter, man. Jesus for all. Yes, yes, yes. The Bible says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people, for all nations. But in the beginning, what did pastor tell you? When the Most High calls you to vocation, he calls you with a calling, with a purpose, to a people with power. And the church said, and the church said, this Bible ain't no joke. This Bible ain't no joke. You might be watching this and you might be saying, you know what? I need to do something with my life, man, for real. My life is taught from the floor. We have God core. 
representatives all over the country and out of the country. GACOR stands for God's Kingdom Outreach Revival Explosion. Make sure you hit that, hit that subscribe button right now. Subscribe. Don't wait around. You know what I'm saying? People say, I don't need that. I got a bishop. I got, I got a pastor. I got some money. Yo, that's all good, man. I ain't trying to hear that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hit the subscribe button because if not you, somebody you know needs to hear this message. Be a flame in Jesus' name and spark a heart today. Uh, Romans 10 and 9, very familiar passage of scripture. This is for you who may want to give your life to Christ right now. Or you, you'll see this and you say, you know what? Man, I need to do that. Simply says this, Romans 10 and 9 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Don't let nobody fool you. Now, if you believe that Jesus is the son of the living God, you believe he died for your sins, you believe he rose from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. That's what the Bible says. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. There's only one way. All this other alternate stuff and this alternate talk, that's crap. That's not true. That is as dumb. And at the end, it will have you hung. I'm trying to tell you something. You don't want to get caught up with that foolishness. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way to the Father. And that way is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. But if, if the Bible says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. See? You won't be ashamed. And with that, I bless you all. You know, Pastor BBJ loves you so much. Stay safe. You know, and continue to seek the most high like never before, even in the midst of this time. I don't care how things look, what people are saying. We're going to stand on the holy word of God as the God Core Coalition, God's Kingdom Outreach Revival Explosion. That's what we're going to do. We're going to stand on the word of God. We're going to pray for all government, pray for all the body of Christ. Uh, partakers, every partake of the body of Christ. It's not about one assembly. It's all about one global body. And that is the universal, the global body of Christ. You know, um, I want you to know that I, I, I thank God for calling me to this vocation and allowing me to, to be your pastor. I can't wait till this, this is all over so we can Congregate again, come together um, soon. Lord willing, I will be tra traveling around the country. Uh, let me give you a little sip here. You know that. Do a lot of talking. That don't get a little dry. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't pass to keep it above fifty. You already know what it is, baby. Uh, so soon, I'm looking to travel around uh, the country and uh, and to. Once again, spend time with our hood shepherds. That's what we call the pastors. They're hood shepherds, representing the good shepherd. You know, they're apostles, they're pastors, they're teachers, they're evangelists and prophets all over the country and out of the country, you know, to get with you and, and the beautiful saints there and the God Core Coalition representatives around the country. Um, we thank God for you, you and you and all of our uh, ministry partners. We thank God for you. We actually continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for you. We pray for one another, as the Bible says, and um, all serious, you know, Yeshua is soon to return. Don't get caught up in the hype. Don't get caught up in racism because the Most High is going to deal with that. Don't get caught up in, um, you know, any type of isms <laughs> and be free so that you can continue to run that race, you know, run it with patience and run it with focus and run it so that you can hear the Holy Spirit navigate you through life. Um, if you're in you're in a situation where you're carrying that weight or that you're, you're 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 dwelling in sin, you know, in the midst of your filth, you can have faith and God's way is the best way for you. I love you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you and yours are blessed, safe and well. But more importantly, I pray 
that you will be ready when Jesus comes. Shalom, shalom, shalom. I know it's been a minute. Yeah. Told y'all about hooking me up with legends. Put them back. This is a God core. Jizz fat. Watch out, man. Peasy tech presentation. Let the world know. On behalf of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is popping. We just got let's one thing go. to say. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. To your high with the highest power, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, my strong tower. Times are short, no time for lyrical sports. I'm the apostle. I'm here for one reason to preach the gospel. Woo! Let it be known to strict the kingdom, Israel, the nation. I've been delivered for theological masqueration. Y'all can miss me with the Calvinistics. Never Jurassic BBJ forever classic like the stylist. Say what you say. Statistics, mathematics, evident. Jesus is Lord, no matter who the sitting president. I embody Emmanuel in the present tense. My anointing strong, and if I can rip it, you hit me. Now, woman, nemesis, no, not one. You got grams, you can't stand me, but you still my son Don't get it twisted, uh, it ain't that type of party My whole team is faithful, we only nobody Let's go!